Chapter 271 Acting With this in mind, Lumian's gaze automatically drifted over to Rat Christo and Giant Simon, taking them in. He sensed that the chances of them becoming expendable pawns were slim, potion consuming beyonders, unlike the blessed relying on divine favors from evil gods, were a rarity. They couldn't be simply stockpiled at will. Firstly, the ingredients required were specific, and secondly, ample time was needed. At the mid-sequence, luck and mastery of the acting method played a role. If you were to use them as mere pawns in this mission, the likelihood of reclaiming the Beyonder characteristics would be greatly diminished. It constituted a substantial portion of Gardner Martin's control over the underground world in the Market District. As a member of the secretive organization, the Iron and Blood Cross Order, Gardner Martin could indeed bear such a loss, but he wouldn't make such a colossal sacrifice for something insignificant. And if the mission was of sufficient importance, sending only one Sequence 7 and two Sequence 8 Beyonders was clearly inadequate. Shouldn't Gardner Martin be concerned about failure? With this realization, Lumian swiftly revised his conjecture. Either this was a preliminary test, a low-risk mission designed to assess him, regardless of whether Rat Crystal and Giant Simon were aware of it, or it was indeed a crucial and perilous operation. While using them as pawns, there would be powerhouses present as a safety net. This was also a test. With this in mind, Lumian's initial reaction was to gaze at Gardner Martin and accept the mission, projecting an image of an ambitious young man striving to climb the ranks. If it was the first possibility, this was his best chance to prove himself. If it was the second possibility, Lumian still had Mr. K's finger quietly nestled in his pocket as a trump card. When the time came, if he needed to divulge his affiliation with the Aurora Order to ensure his survival, he could abandon the Iron and Blood Cross Order's mission. As long as he remained alive, he could await another opportunity. After the catastrophe caused by the Tree of Shadow, Lumian visited Psychic's headquarters and met Mr. K before Gardner Martin could conduct an investigation. He concealed his experience with the Tree of Shadow, merely mentioning that something had occurred in the Market District, trapping them in a peculiar wilderness. Then, the brownish-green tree descended, and Susanna Matisse appeared, draining everyone's energy. To combat the fallen tree spirit, he used a finger to fashion a robust defensive flesh robe, but he didn't receive additional assistance. Later, with the aid of the tree's further descent, Susanna Matisse's weakened state and the involvement of the other two present beyonders, he barely overcame the enemy and vanquished her using his pyromaniac abilities and the fallen mercury from Cordu. He spoke the truth, albeit blurring the sequence of events, time, and location, as well as omitting a few details. The logic remained intact. Mr. K harbored no suspicions after hearing the account. Instead, he sighed and cautioned Lumian not to overly rely on the finger, since there were multiple ways to sever the mystical connection between him and it. Satisfied with Lumian's advancement to Pyromaniac with Gardner Martin's assistance, Mr. K plucked another finger for him. This led Lumian to believe that, as long as he didn't encounter extraordinary environments like Paramita or the Tree of Shadow and wasn't entangled in the perilous affair of confronting a godlike entity head-on with Mr. K's finger, even if he couldn't completely reverse the situation, he still had a high chance of escape. Just as Lumian was about to express his stance to the boss, he suddenly sensed that he shouldn't push his acting too far. That was what Jenna would occasionally say. According to Franca, Boss is at least a sequence 6 conspirer. I can't underestimate his intelligence and discernment. My background is undeniably evident. I'm young and hail from the countryside. I was once entangled in a beyonder catastrophe and lacked knowledge. I wanted to change my fate, but I've spent a considerable time in the market district, openly and covertly accomplishing much. Even with what the boss only knows, it should be enough for him to perceive that I'm not an ignorant country bumpkin who acts rashly and mercilessly. Based on today's incident, the impression the boss has of me should be of someone capable of detecting mission abnormalities and potential dangers. Simply agreeing without reason or observation would only raise suspicions of ulterior motives or reliance on something. That would be troublesome. A whirlwind of thoughts raced through Lumian's mind. He immediately shifted his gaze to Giant Simon and Rat Christo eagerly awaiting their reactions and attitudes toward the mission. 
It remained unclear whether Rat Crystal was recalling the incident involving the mirror person, or his brother's demise due to it. His expression grew nasty, tainted with fear and apprehension. Doubt and weariness flickered across Giant Simon's face, yet he didn't voice any objections. After a few seconds, they nearly spoke simultaneously. Yes, boss. Observing this, Lumion deliberately hesitated before continuing. Yes, boss. With keen eyes, Gardner Martin observed Lumion, Christo, and Simon, assessing their expressions and demeanors. After their unanimous agreement, the boss of the Savoy mob grinned with satisfaction and said, I shall now disclose the mission details. He reached into a drawer and retrieved the scroll made of faux goatskin, laying it out on the desk before them. Approaching, Lumion and his companions beheld a map revealing a section of underground Treyar. The map measured a meter in length and 50 centimeters in width. The upper level depicted the underground Treyar, formed by the municipal department through the excavation of various tunnels and reinforcement of the quarry cave. It corresponded to the streets and squares above ground. The map focused solely on the underground areas of Cati du Machi, Cati de la Cathedral Commemorative, Cati du Jatin Botanique, and Cati de l'Observatoire. However, it was intricately detailed, as if copied from the original by infiltrating the municipal department. Lumion could clearly discern extensions on both sides, although the drawing did not continue. In the middle of the map lay quarry caves, ancient catacombs, and underground river tributaries scattered in a haphazard manner and connected to the upper level through visible or concealed tunnels. This portion contained numerous gaps and omissions. Beside these areas were inscriptions such as to be investigated, to be explored, and to be searched. The lower levels of the map encompassed collapsed mines and more missing information, as if veiled in a shroud of fog. Even the Iron and Blood Cross Order, a secret organization, lacked comprehensive knowledge. Numerous passageways extended downward from this level, but the map did not indicate their connections. Fourth Epoch Treyar, the place referred to as the ancient ruins reserved by the authorities. It's evident that this map is a copy of a more comprehensive one. A complete version includes Fourth Epoch Treyar? The Iron Blood Cross Order possesses extensive knowledge of the underground. Lumion speculated as he committed the incomplete map to memory. After his three subordinates had taken a cursory glance at the map, Gardner Martin pointed to a location and said, This is your destination. It marked a collapsed mine, yet there remained some open space. Situated at the lowest level of the map, it was near 4th Epoch Treyar. Above it, corresponding to Avenue Selbu, Rue des Malvais Enfants, and Place de la Forêt, lay the intersection between Cati de la Zovetois and Cati du Jardin Botanique. It's called the Albert Mines, Gardner Martin introduced. To reach it, you must traverse two privately bored tunnels. It remains unknown to the authorities and most people who travel underground. As he spoke, Gardner Martin traced the tunnel with his finger and instructed Lumion, Christo, and Simon on the correct entrance. Finally, he sighed with a tinge of emotion and added, ah, Six years ago, Albert Goncourt, the leader of the rebellion and the mastermind behind the uprising, relied on this mine, which he discovered and named, to elude the army, police, and official beyonders who were searching the underground. He survived. Six years ago. Rebellion. Uprising. Lumion instantly recalled what he had witnessed and heard. During the war with the Lowen Kingdom, prices in Treyar skyrocketed, leaving people in despair due to the exorbitant cost of food. This triggered a massive protest that swept through the city, resulting in various conflicts. From Gardner Martin's words, it was evident that the protest wasn't purely spontaneous. Someone had planned and guided it. Was the Iron and Blood Cross Order also involved? Lumion continued to gaze at the map, lost in thought. Concluding his explanation, Gardner Martin said, Your task is to reach the Albert Mines before noon and await the arrival of a trader who will hand you a box. You need not give him anything, nor do you need to communicate with him verbally. On your return journey, you must not open that box, as doing so would expose you to immeasurable danger. As long as you strictly follow my instructions, the mission poses minimal risk. While you may encounter peculiar phenomena concealed underground or face beyonder monsters, 
good teamwork will resolve those challenges. After providing them with additional guidance, Lumian, Cristo, and Simon each took a carbide lamp and departed from 11 Rue des Fontaines, making their way to the nearest entrance to Underground Treyarch. Casting a final glance at the now out of sight grayish white villa, Lumian considered the impression Gardner Martin had of him. With a smile, he casually inquired of Rat Cristo and Giant Simon, Have you undertaken similar missions before? Rat Cristo fell silent for a few seconds before answering, Thrice. Once, Giant Simon replied in a slightly buzzing voice. Lumian chuckled, Well, the fact that you're still alive suggests that such missions aren't too perilous. Rat Crystal remained silent, as though he had fallen into a grim recollection. Giant Simon reassured himself, echoing Lumian's words. You're right. Perhaps this is a test from the boss. Those who pass may have an opportunity to advance further. Lumian smiled. And what about those who fail? Do they perish on the spot?